Hello and welcome back to another Good Game Nation video where we bring you everything TCG. My name is Sam and I'm here with today with Zach. Zach, say hello. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. And we are doing Meta Monday today where we look at what the meta's looking like. Uh, and today we're going to look at set two. We just had that big, big regional where it was just Whitebeard, right? It was, I think it was 15 out of the t out of the four pods or something like that were all Whitebeard. It was nuts. And then the next most was Zoro. But there was a couple things that spawned out of this that we're seeing a little bit more. So we wanted to take a look and bring it to light because it's definitely interesting, I think. And the first one we're going to look at is this Smoker list. This is a Locals that we had saw online um, from Chile. But this represents a, a blacklist that we had been seeing in the local scene a little bit. So we wanted to touch on it um, because it is cool because we didn't see this in the East at all. Black was a really suppressed color because of the dot on combo. Um, but it is doing well here in the West. And Zach, you see this list a lot. One of our good buddies is playing this list. He's spamming it. What do you think about this? Like, why is this working in a, I would have assumed, would have been a very white beard uh, dominated meta? Yeah, so I think, like, from the local level, it's really, really good into green. And I think that translates well uh, at the lower levels. I think if you dodge red at a regional, you could also do very well. I think you, you just, it's also fun, right? Like it's the new color. It's, it's different and it has the admirals and the admirals are all badass. So like, it's kind of hard. Uh, like you mentioned, like our buddy plays the deck, you know, Mark plays it and, um, he's really good with it. He won like two weeks in a row. Uh, 40 man plus tourneys and it's just it's really good at what it does which is control but once you realize that it's very fragile it, it's kind of easy to beat in my opinion yeah i think uh i think you hit it on the head i i hadn't um the cards you could play. There's not many cards, like so. You there's not a lot of stuff you can get taken by surprise. You know, there's not a lot of versatility in these lists. You know what's coming, um, and then there's the lack of consistency. Um, no real draws. No real searches. Um, the deck that we just posted here, the Sanji list, um, that has two searchers, um, and with no searchers in a meta with running two or three is common. Uh, it seems very difficult in a long-winded tournament to keep up. Um, so I definitely think I can see understanding that where it does well locally because you're playing less rounds. Um, it definitely would struggle more to be consistent for a long-winded tournament. Yeah, I do think it has the luxury of, like, I think it's very forgiving, I guess, I would say, because, like, you have, like, these late-game threats, this, like, insurance policy, right? Like, Kuzan is... It, it's still the... It, Double Kuzan is impossible to beat. You can't beat double trend drop. I've tried. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you play. Like it's. Yeah. What do you do? Everything's zero. Everything is zero. Yeah. Yeah. Of, it's, it's like you said. There's not a whole lot. Like this list. Um, a lot of iterations, I guess. Could like the things you could change. You know. Stuff that, like, they play around where I'm playing at. You know, Mark was, was playing with the one-drop Kobe for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I finally got him on to... Uh, I've been drawing a blank on the name, but it's the one-drop event that draws a card and minuses two. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I was because I explained it, like you said, right? Like, there's just not a lot of drop power. Your drop power is four-drop Kuzan, and you hope you get a combo power, right? Like, you hope you get a counter card. Yeah. It's, he has no counter. You want to play Borsalino, so the fact that it has counter is, like, kind of useless. Sakazuki has no counter. Smoker has no counter. Kuzan has no counter. Like, it, it's really, really, really fragile. Like, they could have 12 guards in hand, and you're just like, only four of them are real. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you touched on all the things I think we touched on Black when it came out, where the cards individually are insane. Uh, all the admirals are insane. Smoker as a starter SR is absolutely insane, and they have a crazy SR. Um, but they're just missing the fundamental pieces. They just needed a searcher, which clearly showed in set three. Uh, Lucci is one of the most popular decks, and who all they needed was a couple searchers. And 
now they're popping off. Um, it's crazy what consistency does for the game. It really turns a deck around. Um, but I love to see it here because I know when we predicted it, we wanted it to, maybe we just wanted it to do better because we saw what maybe could happen here. So I do see the correlation there. And I, I'm, I am glad it's performing uh, better than it did in the East. I think it did deserve uh, some placements versus none. So that's a pro. I will touch on the fact that like the the two smokers in the deck that say they can't be KO'd. That's, uh, that's good. It, they're really strong, right? And this does have a very, very good purple matchup because mm-hmm. they can't do nothing to you. It's auto you, win. You stick guys on them. You literally just stick your guys on the board that so say they can't be KO'd. Your Borsalinos, your your smokers, and then you just combo out of everything else and just win the game based off that by itself. I think the best thing about the deck, though, is the leader. Yeah, I... I, I off camera I have conversations with Preston. If if Marco wasn't dominating set three, Smoker would be such a great leader in set three. There's so many good cards for him finally, and you just add that consistency, he'd be so powerful. But you can't overvalue the ability to ki- kill Marco easier with Lucci. So I definitely agree. I, I do enjoy the Smoker leader, and he's badass. So we're with it. Next, oh. we're we're showing something that's I'm very happy about um, that Zach's not. One of the really cool decks that spawned out of the regionals was a fifth place Magellan, and Magellan's a little notorious on this channel, so you know we had to cover it. Uh, Magellan is a very interesting leader. He's a when a Donna's return leader gets a grand, um, but a lot of these cards are quite different than any purple deck that has done well. Um, so this is all really new. Um, you have been seeing this a lot. Uh, because of this gentleman. Um, yep. So I would love to hear your early first impressions on this guy. I think it's cheese, man. <laughs> it's all cheese. Like, everybody at the local wanted to do something cool. You know, like, kudos to this guy, right? Like, doing that in a 500-man-plus tournament, no matter what. You know, even if you dodged your bad matchup, who cares? Like, that's still an impressive feat. Uh I, it could be the surprise factor, right? Um, uh, I wouldn't have prepped for this. Never. Never in my life. And I tell you what, I, I ran into Hell of Judgment once, and then I got very upset. That card's like, good. I don't like swinging the seven, and then, then saying, all right, I'm going to Hell's Judgment, and now your leader's okay. And that other attack you wanted to swing with is now just not going to happen either. That's annoying. Yeah. I, there's there's a lot of good things here. I like a lot of these cards. Um, I really liked Magella when it came out. I really liked what it could do hypothetically to Whitebeard, um, which is what I hope happened for this gentleman. I'm really hoping that he ran into a lot of Whitebeards and this card was just a problem for them. Um, but Hell's Judgment was another card that we called out that was easily the best card that Purple printed that set or last set combined, if you want to be honest. So, so, yeah, and I, I, I think surprise factor is probably a big deal here um, because if I'm practicing, I'm putting 0% of my time into this. It's not even on my radar. I've probably prepped for Kaido a little bit, but never never anything like this. Um, yeah, I think purple in general, and I think you're right. You do just kind of gravitate towards Kaido. Yeah, it's it's been the more consistent deck. It ha it has a very very clear win condition, and that's something Magellan wasn't given. They weren't given a big drop. The biggest drop that set was him, which is a five six k. That's not a card you can win the game with. Um, and they're running King. That's like the best thing. All the other eight drops and nine drops for purple are, are way too costly um, for it for a leader that can't produce ramp. Um, so I do think surprise factor is a big deal here. Um, but there are things that are good into the meta because we, I do think Magellan and Hell's Judgment are good into Whitebeard. So I do see a way where, you know, you can do consistently well with this guy. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, the Magellan actually into Whitebeard feels really good. I think when I was testing against this deck, it's, I was playing Zoro. And, yeah. uh, so the Magellan, the Magellan felt really, really like underwhelming. Yeah. It was kind of just like, oh man, you really wasted five mana. Like that was cool. Right. But I could see the argument to it being really good into white weird, especially if they're going second, right? Like mm-hmm. that slows them down actually just an entire turn. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't hate that. Yeah, you definitely if you can stop the nine drop coming out just for a single turn, that that probably wins you the game. Um so I, I do see if if you do heavily predict Whitebeard, which I probably would predict 
for the consistency of this of this set and this meta. Um, but Magellan could find a world where he works. I don't know if Magellan leaders what I would have done. I probably would have still played Kaido um, and just added Magellan and Hell's Judgment. But I think the Sadie with the the Tars were the defying factor. I think that that surprise uh, extra damage, extra body might have been a little too much for the player not prepared. Yeah, can we hover the uh, the one by the Uda? Oh yeah, the, yeah that's cool. That the, crack. This guy's what got double. Saying? He's got double. <laughs> He's got double. Right. I'm sold. It's fine. We can try it. <laughs> I've already played it. It's on the channel somewhere. I'm a big fan already. I love this. Double, double strikes are cool. I every game, every card game I play, double strike magic. It's always impactful. It's it's never been. And in Dragon Ball, there was a card that gave it to you from your hand. Too good. Good old Champa. Well, guys, that was our off-brand meta. We covered a lot of Whitebeard last episode, so we definitely had to get a little little different. We'll probably do set three next. Uh, are there any set three leaders you kind of want to see? Definitely have seen some cool Nami lists. Uh, I saw a couple of Vonks, which was different. Um, so let us know what you guys uh, want to see. Zach, what do you think? What set three leader do you want to see right now? Arlong. <sighs> God, I want, <laughs> God, I want Arlong to do something that would be that would make my day i just I, I think green and yellow are cool i just i don't know there's not a lot of really cool trigger cards so it's like i i'm yeah. a i'm a huge fan of cracker and smoothie i think they're great trigger cards and i pressed Those are the banished cards right like the banished double strike cards the, yeah they are they're pretty cool um and i really like the wano preston wants to do a wano green yellow because it works now so there's some room Ooh. for our long there's some room for our long and i love it thank you guys for watching if you're still here Let's do the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh, God. Is Kid actually dead? I couldn't handle that. One shot is. I hope he comes <laughs> back. That would suck. It's just like, damn, who's safe? For real. I think they're all fruit users too. They're screwed. It's just like, it's crazy.